Well, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the webinar about Pennsylvania's filial support law. Uh, this is a law that allows creditors to sue children for the debts of their indigent parents. Uh, my name is uh, Matt Parker, an attorney with the firm of Marshall, Parker & Weber, and today I'll be going over the materials with you so you have a better understanding of how this law works. Uh, keep in mind that throughout the webinar, you, if you have any questions, you can type them in the GoToWebinar Q&A box. Hopefully, we'll have some time to get to your questions at the end, or we'll respond to them after the webinar is completed. Uh, this presentation will answer, of course, those questions about whether children may be held responsible to pay for a parent's long-term care, that is, nursing home expenses, and if so, what uh, parents and children can do in order to protect themselves from a filial support claim. Of course, the filial support claim could be used in a variety of other contexts, but we're going to focus today on nursing home costs, uh, where it is a popular collection tool uh, for those pursuing children for nursing home debts. We have a fictitious fact pattern that we'll be using throughout the materials. It is a David Bowie influenced, if you will. Um, if you are a music fan, you'll know who David Bowie is. Here we have the Stardust family. Uh, we have Ziggy and Lady Stardust, husband and wife. Ziggy is retired from NASA and he's 80, 85 and he has a recent dementia diagnosis. Uh, his wife is a retired school teacher, age 80. Uh, she's in fairly good health. So we also have some children of the Stardust family. Uh, we have Kurt and Frank. Uh, Kurt is age 55. He works as an IT consultant in California. Uh, the implication there, he's probably doing pretty well for himself. And he's married with two children. So he has some financial obligations to raise those kids. His brother, Frank, is age 53. He works construction. He's a frustrated drummer who never made it. Um, so he probably does not have the same income as his brother, and uh, he's married with no children. So we're going to revisit this uh, presentation uh, a little later, or this fact pattern, rather, a little later in the uh, presentation. And we're going to first go over the law surrounding filial support uh, and give you an idea how this law operates. So uh, we're going to ask the all-important question, can children be liable for long-term care expenses incurred by a parent? Uh, by long-term care expenses, what we typically mean is nursing home costs. Now, these lawsuits don't typically arise in other forms of long-term care. Uh, so your loved one may be in assisted living uh, or personal care facility. Uh, and it's probably because the amount of debt is uh, so much more significant than nursing home care um, with the nursing home care versus these other environments. Uh, and a lot of these other environments make sure you have resources to pay for your care before admission. Uh, so normally you don't have a lot of outstanding debt with assisted living or personal care home. But here in Pennsylvania, when nursing home care bills run about $10,000 per month, we will often see some of these bills go unpaid for many, many months. And the nursing home, of course, needs to be paid. So what they do, like a lot of other uh, you know, businesses, is they'll turn the unpaid account over to a collection attorney who will then file a lawsuit to collect the unpaid balance. When they file these lawsuits, they can claim that maybe there was a breach of contract, maybe you received services and you agreed to pay for them, and therefore you should be held responsible. But oftentimes they'll throw an account, uh, if you will, a claim. Part of the claim will be this filial support action. Uh, and they can, in fact, sue the children of the parent whose nursing bill, home bill has gone unpaid. Uh, that means that the parent uh, hasn't paid the bill, uh, they don't have private insurance, or the Medicaid program has not paid the bill. The bill, for some reason, has gone unpaid, and the collection attorney is seeking to collect the funds from the kids. This is rather unusual concept. Um, normally, adults are not personally responsible for some other adult's uh, debt. You know, you have to ha usually have a contract in place saying, I agree to pay this other person's debt. It might come up with like school loans. Um, there's some guarantor arrangement where you agree to pay it if the initial person defaults under the loan. Um, but this law uh, in Pennsylvania changes that dynamic. You need a state law to change the basic rules of contract. And so here in Pennsylvania, 
we have a state statute that allows a creditor to pursue someone who did not incur the debt. Uh, so the filial support law is, is a Pennsylvania statute that allows creditors of your parents to sue you. If you happen to live in another state, uh, perhaps Florida or somewhere with, that doesn't have a filial support act, you won't be subject to this type of uh, action. Uh, it's solely based on Pennsylvania law, uh, and it's not a, going to be found in every single state in the country. I believe there's a dozen or so states out there beyond Pennsylvania that do have the law on the books. Okay. So here's Pennsylvania's filial support statute that's been modified a little bit for the space that we have. Uh, at first glance, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the children have a duty of support uh, for their parents. Uh, this can be provided uh, through care or even financial support. Uh, we recognize similar duties imposed between spouses and parents to care for their minor children. So this is an extension of the same concept. If you look at the law a little closer, you'll find the word indigent. Uh, indigent in this context means they don't have adequate means to provide for one's maintenance and support. Uh, I might use a synonym poor. You know, this person doesn't have any money to support themselves. Um, the statute is a mandatory obligation to provide for a parent when they need assistance or they cannot provide for themselves. A few comments about how the law arose. Um, it has its origins uh, in a time uh, when in Great Britain, England, uh, there were so-called debtor's prisons. Uh, in, at that time, a family could be held responsible for the debts of others in the family, including the parents. Uh, the family was, in essence, looked upon as a financial unit. If one person went into debt, the other family members could be hauled into court to help pay for that debt. And if you didn't pay it, uh, they would throw you in jail. Uh, as I've read the history of these laws, they were brought over to America during the initial colonization of our country, and in some states uh, in the country, they still remain on the books, despite the fact that they're mostly outdated. Um, this is not an action that is used today. Uh, most of the times, we simply use contract law to determine who's responsible for somebody else's debt. So if you want to learn more about the history of these laws, I encourage you to visit a blog called the Elder Law Professor's Blog. Uh, Catherine Pearson of the Dickinson School of Law writes for that blog, and she's well regarded as the expert on in the field of filial support here in Pennsylvania. All right, let's talk a little bit about the defenses to the claim. So here's how you can defend yourself if you find yourself um, being sued by someone for to pay the debt of one of your parents. Uh, there are two defenses that you could raise. Uh, a child could attempt to show that they are unable to financially support the parent, or number two, that the parent abandoned them for a period of 10 years during the child's minority. Now, there's not a lot to work here, to work with here with regards to these defenses. It's ultimately up to the court to decide if a particular child does or does not have sufficient financial ability to support the parent. I will tell you uh, that the courts have taken really tough stance against the kids uh, even ordering them to pay in cases where their own children's expenses outweigh their income. So even though you might go into court and say, oh, I've got all these bills associated with raising my own family. Look, I've got a mortgage to pay. I've got uh, braces to pay for for my daughter. I've got a car payment. Uh, the courts seem to inevitably say, yeah, okay, but you can pay something. We're going to obligate you to pay uh, you know, $200 a month or some figure towards the cost of your parents' care. The second defense is the abandonment defense, uh, and it's a bit clearer there uh, that there has to be an, a period of time where the parent abandons you for 10 years. And I'm never quite sure if, if you, know, you know, your parent puts you up for adoption, uh, whether that qualifies as abandonment. I would think so. Uh, if you have been adopted by somebody else, uh, you certainly are not obligated uh, to pay for somebody's cost of care who is not who is your biological parent, but not perhaps not your legal uh, parent at that point. Uh, but this would seem to be some sort of estrangement. Uh, maybe there was a divorce. 
and you went off with one of the parents and you never saw the other parent again. They simply left your life. Um, and so that would qualify as a, as a period of time where they are not in your life and, and therefore be considered abandonment by the court. So uh, even in cases where children and their parents have really awful relationships uh, to the point where you know, kids may have changed their name, you know, not spoken to the parents in many, many years of adulthood, uh, there isn't that abandonment during the minority and therefore courts have said, we're not really concerned about how well you get along with your mom or dad. We're going to find some sort of obligation to, for you to pay uh, this debt. Okay. So you can have, a, as I think of it, the, the mommy dearest type relationship with your parent. I mean, it's absolutely horrible. Uh, the courts are not going to let you off the hook just for bad relationships. Okay. All right. So... How do these cases normally arise? Um, how, do you, how do people get in the predicament of being sued by the nursing home? Uh, well, there are a handful of cases that have come up here in Pennsylvania. You can see the case names on these slides, and if you're really interested in doing some research, you can just type these case names in on Google, and they'll pop up, and you can read the, the cases all together. Um, but I should point out that if you happen to have resources to pay the bill, or there's insurance to pay your care, there's not going to be any reason for the nursing home to sue anybody. This, this, these cases arise when the nursing home is not getting paid. Uh, so something has gone on uh, to cause the person to be not eligible for assistance that otherwise would pay the nursing home. Okay? Typically, a person of modest means um, who has made a gift of their money will ultimately render that person ineligible for a program called Medicaid. And Medicaid is the program that pays for most nursing home care of, of everyone in, in these facilities. Um, if you go through the average cost, you lose paying for the cost of a person's care in the average nursing home, you'll see that 80 to 90 percent of these people are, are getting some form of assistance from Medicaid. So the Medicaid rule, uh, rules are very complicated. And in essence, what they say is that if you've made a gift of your money or property within the five years prior to applying for Medicaid, you're not going to be eligible for Medicaid for a period of time. In essence, the more you give away, the longer you're ineligible. And I'll tell you right now, if you give away about $10,000, you're not going to be eligible for Medicaid for one month. And what they do is they wait until you've run out of all of your other money, and then they, they determine what you did with your resources, and then they tack on a period of ineligibility at that point. So uh, in essence, you're out of resources. They calculate how long you're ineligible because you gave away so much money. And then they'll say, well, you've got to come up with money to pay through this period of ineligibility. And if you happen to have given your money to your kids and they spent it, you can't get it back, that's when the nursing home is not getting paid. And that's where these, these cases normally arise. So... One of the leading case, cases that you can turn to is the Bud case at the top of this list. And it's sort of the classic case because we have a child who made transfers of assets to herself from her mother's accounts using the power of attorney, and she didn't spend those assets on her mother's care. What she did is she just gifted herself her mother's money, took it out of her mom's account, gave it to herself, and then presumably spent it on her own needs. So mom tries to apply for medical assistance, and is told by the government, whoa, 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 all this money you used to have, it went to your daughter. You made a large gift of money to your daughter. Probably mom wasn't aware. Mom had you know, dementia. But nevertheless, uh, mom has been considered to have made a gift of money to her daughter, and consequently, she's not eligible for Medicaid for a period of time. And during that time, somebody had to pay for mom's care. Logically, it should be the daughter. She should give the money back to mom and get mom's care paid for, but in this case, she did not. The daughter got sued, and she was held responsible for paying for her mother's care during that time that her mother was not eligible for Medicaid. I should point out that there are very legitimate ways to protect assets, even when the parent is in the nursing home. So if in the Bud case, the daughter had come to see an elder law attorney, there could have been some proper planning done, Money could have been sheltered for the daughter. Not all of it. Not all of it, because you would have had to use some of it to pay the nursing home. But you could do proper planning to shelter some of that money. 
Uh, in this case, it was not done in a proper manner. She just took the money out of mom's account, pocketed the money, and consequently mom was not eligible for Medicaid. She was sued in order to pay something towards her mother's cost of care. The second case on the list, Pittas, it got a lot of national attention when it came out. Uh, the facts behind this case was that Mrs. Pittis was not a citizen of the United States. She was a Greek resident who had come over here to visit her son, who was living here in, I think it was Harrisburg. And while she was visiting her son, she was in an auto accident, and she was taken to the nursing home. And the son... Uh, was working with the nursing home to try and get her his mother Medicaid benefits. Well, it was difficult. I, I, apparently, it was very difficult to get information about her mother's finances because she was a Greek citizen. She lived in Greece. She had Greek accounts. And so it was very difficult to get the Medicaid application filed. Information was not given to the government in a timely manner. So for every month that, her, that Mrs. Pettis was in the nursing home, the nursing home was not getting paid. And in fact, uh, about a $90,000 bill was accrued. Uh, and then <laughs> Mrs. Pittis's daughter came over here from Greece, took her out of the nursing home, put her on an airplane, and flew her back to Greece, and she's not been seen from since. So uh, what happened is the nursing home was furious, and they called their lawyer and said, listen, we're out $90,000. What can we do? Well, these, these lawyers were rather smart, and they said, We'll sue the son who lives here in Harrisburg. And they did. They sued him. And he was held responsible for paying some of that $90,000 bill. So that was a really unfortunate result. I'm sure the son, you know, was just, you know, if you will, an innocent bystander, although he was working with the nursing home to try and file the application and he might have worked a little harder to get the information to them so that he wouldn't be held responsible. But I'm sure he had no idea that he could be sued. Uh, so what happens in the Pittis case is, is another classic scenario that comes up. You don't properly file for Medicaid. Either the application is sitting there and the nursing home is not able to file it for uh, the resident because they don't have the right information. Maybe it gets denied because the information wasn't given to the Department of Human Services that reviews these applications. So something goes wrong in the application process, and that results in this big, big bill accruing, and then the nursing home sues somebody. Last case uh, is the Iori case, and that's where the court ordered a child to pay $400 a month to support his mother. But the facts in this case were a little different. Uh, the mother was actually at home. She just was very poor, indigent, and she didn't have enough money to pay for her caregiver. So the mother, on the, actually her mother's, the mother's agent was one of her other kids, which is really weird, but her mother ends up suing two of her other kids. And the court says, hey, you can afford to help pay for your mother's caregivers, private caregivers, and help her stay at home. So the statute can be used not just to collect an outstanding nursing home debt, but it can be used to help pay for expenses associated with a parent's care such as paying for caregivers while the parent is at home. And in this case, one of the sons didn't have a very good relationship with his mom, and the court said, we really don't care, and we don't care that you have other bills to pay. Neither one of these kids who got sued got money from their mom. This, this statute was just used to help defray the cost of mom's care um, while she was staying at home. So it's an extension of the filial support law. All right. Some of the lessons learned from this case law, usually these cases are brought to collect the debt rather than a method of acquiring support for the parent. But as we saw in the Ori case, it can be used to basically uh, you know, get an order of support for a parent who doesn't have a lot of money to pay for expenses. Uh, might, much like you have an order of support to help uh, pay for a minor's care you know, in a divorce proceeding. It can use, be used in the same way. Nursing homes can cherry pick their defendants, and they don't have to select a bad actor, such as in the Pittis case. The son who was living here wasn't necessarily a bad actor. Maybe he didn't do anything wrong. He was a child of the woman who accrued the debt, and he could be sued. Um, we don't see the courts alleviating the burden of support simply because you have other expenses. Uh, you could have, um, you know, kids going to college, and you're trying to pay for their ex expenses. Uh, the court won't necessarily let you off your hook. 
They will say, hey, you've got to pay something towards the cost of your parents' care. Bad relationship alone is not, not enough to absolve yourself of the responsibility of helping to pay for your parents' care. You really have to show that you were abandoned. So let's revisit our fact pattern. Uh, in example one uh, that we have here, uh, the spouse has passed away, and the drummer child, Frank, has been caring for his dad. No gifts have been made in this case. Uh, we're just using dad's money to pay for dad at home. Then Ziggy eventually gets placed in the nursing home, and the money gets spent down, and, you know, it's gone. And, uh, you know, now you're going to try and probably apply for, for medical assistance, that is Medicaid. So is there any implication in, in this case where the Filial Support Act might be used? The answer is, is certainly not likely, you know, provided there's an application for medical assistance filed in a timely fashion. So once Ziggy goes in and runs out of money, you file for state aid, you know, then the state will pick up the tab from that point forward. Um, and provided no gifts have been made in the last five years, there's no reason for Ziggy to be not eligible for Medicaid. So a lot of people have this overriding fear that they're going to get sued just because their parents are entering the nursing home. Not the case. If you properly managed the parents' assets, you haven't made large transfers in the last five years, uh, and then you properly apply for Medicaid, it won't likely be a suit uh, filed by the nursing home to collect monies from the kids because they're getting paid. Well, let's change the fact pattern and presume Ziggy may give some money to both of his sons in the last five years. And they're sizable gifts. We're not talking about a few hundred dollars here and there. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars have been transferred to kids. And you'd be surprised. This goes on all the time. Even though Ziggy has dementia and probably should be managing his money properly to pay for his care and not be making gifts, well, whether it's the parents' idea or the kids' ideas, you know, they tend to transfer these assets. Um, you know, within just a few years of entering a nursing home. And they wonder why they cannot get medical assistance. Once the gifts are discovered, the government's going to advise Ziggy that because he gave away $200,000 to his son, he is not eligible for medical assistance. The period of time will be quite significant in this case. It's likely to be 20 months that he is not eligible for benefits. Without the ability to qualify for the program, somebody's going to need to pay for his care during that time. What if Frank went out and spent all his money on drums and going to rock concerts, traveling the world? Uh, well, it's likely that Kurt, who's living out in California, will, will be sued by the nursing home. Um, Kurt can try and defend himself and say, wait a minute, um, you know, my brother got $100,000 as well. Why should I be the one paying for my dad's care? Uh, but the, chip, the, the nursing home can decide to go after Kurt or Frank. You know, Frank doesn't have any money. They're definitely going to go after Kurt. So the wealthier kid could be on the hook for paying this bill. Kurt could try and say, listen, I got kids in college. I got other expenses. I got a mortgage to pay. Good luck, Kurt. Uh, I'm sure the court's going to be sympathetic because you got $100,000. and probably should return all of that. Um, so uh, I would uh, say that Ziggy is probably going to be on the hook for some of uh, uh, not, I'm sorry, Ziggy, it's his son, Kurt, is going to be on the hook for some of Ziggy's cost of care. What to do if you've been sued by a nursing home? Hopefully none of you will face such a suit, but here are some tips. Don't ignore the collection letters or the lawsuit. Um, I see kids occasionally saying, yeah, we got these letters. What are we supposed to do? I don't, I don't have anything to do with mom's care. You know, she's in the nursing home. My brother's been handling that. Why am I getting these letters from the nursing home? Don't ignore them. <laughs> There's a reason you're getting those letters. They know you're one of the kids. They're preparing to file a lawsuit against everybody that they can, and they're going to try to collect as much money from the family as possible. Maybe your brother has mismanaged the assets, and the nursing home has turned this matter over to a collection attorney who is going to file a lawsuit in the near future. So don't ignore the letters. And don't ignore the complaint either. Once you get served with a complaint, you have only so much time to file a response. Otherwise, a default judgment could be entered against you. So 
Second of all, go to an experienced elder law attorney right away, get proper Medicaid application filed and try to cure the gift. There are techniques to fix these gifts. What I recommend is that if you know your mom or dad has made gifts of money or property in the past, go to an attorney when they still have money. Hopefully they still got some money left. Even though they've been giving money away over the last five years, go see that elder law attorney at that time when they've still got some money in the bank. There are techniques we can use to try and cure those gifts uh, without having to give back all of the money. That's what I always try to do. I try to shelter what's already been given away. And what I'm trying to do is use whatever money remains to fix uh, the period of ineligibility that has been caused by these prior gifts, okay? So don't wait to go see an attorney. You need to do so as quickly as possible. And lastly, negotiate with the nursing home. You've you got to stall these proceedings. Uh, there are a variety of ways to negotiate with them, make payments. If there's a house out there, maybe you can get a lien against the house so that when mom or dad dies, there's, the nursing home's going to get paid uh, when the house gets put up for sale. Uh, a variety of ways you can help uh, stall the proceedings and negotiate with the nursing home. So that would be option number three there. I just want to emphasize the importance of a properly filed Medicaid application. As I've explained, Medicaid comes, covers nursing home expenses for anybody who doesn't have uh, the financial means to pay for the cost of their care. But you've got to meet all the criteria uh, when you, you file the Medicaid application uh, in order to become eligible. Uh, if you don't take the appropriate steps to file the application and disclose all the information about the finances, uh, the assistance office can deny your application. And it's a lot of work to gather five years' worth of records, comb through them, see what you've done with the your parents have done with the money, and report all of that to the government. Uh, go to an elder law attorney if you're overwhelmed and uh, get a Medicaid qualification plan started. Uh, if you're just going to spend down rather than try and shelter the money, that's fine. But there are all sorts of techniques out there that can help uh, qualify somebody for Medicaid very quickly. The elder law attorneys know what those techniques are. And so you've got to be uh, sharp enough to realize that, that this application process is not always going to be easy. And if the person has always been poor, I understand maybe it would be an easy process, but if they had a house and they had bank accounts, they closed out accounts, reinvested their money, did all sorts of things with their assets, and you don't know what your parents were doing with their money, it's best just to take all the records to an attorney and say, help, help me file this application, help me do it right so things don't go wrong and I don't end up um, getting sued by the nursing home. Well, here's the conclusion, the summary. Uh, children can, in fact, be liable for their parents' unpaid nursing home bills here in Pennsylvania. Uh, they have used this support statute to collect unpaid balances on uh, bills, but they also can be used to as an order of support, even if your parents at home. Uh, defenses under the Support Act are limited. Uh, you had, you really have to have been abandoned for 10 years as a young person in order to avoid liability under this case. Uh, and you don't have to be a bad actor. You don't have to be the bad child. Any of the kids can be sued. If you file a proper Medicaid application, that can eliminate the liability. Uh, so get the Medicaid application filed on time uh, so there's no nurse, outstanding nursing home bill and uh, the nursing home is getting paid. They're not going to sue you if Medicaid is paying for the cost of care. And lastly, do seek an elder law attorney to help uh, with the Medicaid application or put a plan uh, together that will help your loved one qualify as quickly as possible for benefit. Well, that wraps up our presentation today. I hope you got something out of it, and uh, I look forward to presenting the next topic. Thank you for attending.